Hey, it's Paul from paulsaylor.com. Thanks for listening. Um, today I'm going to say why I think that Alibaba should buy Costco and why I think it would be very, very good for the U.S. market, good for Amazon. I'm oh, sorry, not for Amazon. <laughs> not good for Amazon. Good for Alibaba, good for Costco, good for the American consumers, and a protective strategy uh against Amazon. Okay, Amazon is, in the, in the last few years, if you haven't been watching the retail space, and I wanna say, if you're in the retail business, I think you'll find this analysis interesting, and if you're not, you're just a, you're a regular consumer, I think retail affects us all, right? We all buy stuff every day, and how we buy it and what we buy, it affects everybody, right? So I think this, is, this could be an interesting uh, analysis, even for the regular person, the average consumer, uh, how things are changing in the market. Okay, so my take is that Amazon, everybody knows that Amazon is going into many new businesses, one after the other. And when they go in, it's a fearsome force, right? It is a fearsome force. They are a, they, they are scary. When they come in, stocks is just, just plummet, right? So in, other, in, in the competitors. So what we're seeing and what I haven't heard is that Amazon, I'm sorry, it's, yeah, Amazon is going into Costco's business. Okay, first thing, you got to look at Amazon and Costco. Both of them are Seattle-based, right? Uh, Issaquah, Seattle, basically same thing, right? They're both up in Seattle. And so there's a lot of information that Amazon has on Costco that other companies don't. Like really good information, right? The, both companies grew. Both companies, uh, I know a lot of the management are friends. There's a lot of sharing of information. Uh, nobody imagined the two would be competitors, right? So now, now what we're seeing is Amazon is the one that is going in as a competitor. And very similar to Costco. Costco started, Jim Sinegal started with Price Club, right? With, with Soul Price. And they, then, then Costco went separate, started out in, in, up, up in uh, Seattle. And they had an agreement not to compete. Finally, they did compete in the end. And Costco destroyed. Well, they bought them, but they 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 really did a. Uh, it was very very competitive and brutal uh, competition. And Costco definitely won. Plus the fact that they they had a special deal to buy the Mexican Costco uh, Price Club stores, and they had an agreement on paper. Then the peso dropped into like nothing pennies overnight. And they, Costco was able to purchase the Price Club uh, stores for nothing in Mexico. So there was a lot of good luck also. There was wind There was wind at Costco's back, is what I'm saying. There has been wind at, at Costco's back since the beginning. Costco started, if you're not, if you don't, if, you know, don't remember old Costco. Costco was a serious revolution. And in the 80s, Jim Senegal was Steve Jobs. I'm serious. Steve Jobs, every time Steve Jobs came out with a new product, the new iPhone, the iPad, the iPod, the the Mac Pro, you know, the Mac Air, the, he, it was almost like, it was really, it was almost like a god coming out and showing something to consumers they had never seen that they wanted. And it was, and people were glued to the TV, right? They're glued to the screen watching this. And they went out straight to the stores and bought, right? And, and, and it was like he was bringing gifts to humanity, like in a sense, right? And that's exactly, if you can imagine, that was what Jim Sinegal was back in the 80s because the market was very different. Back then, you had all these middlemen basically driving up the prices of products and also making storage more difficult. Quality wasn't as good. Quality control wasn't as good. Um, it was more difficult to purchase things. They were more expensive. There was less stock. You know, it was it was a mess. It was like a mess. And Costco came in and said, look, we are going to come in. And basically, they did what Price Club did, which was cut out the middleman. So whether you're buying whatever, you know, and there was tons of companies that were pissed off about Costco. You know, I know there was just endless companies that tried to keep their prices high. And Costco said, no, we have a certain profit margin and we will never, ever raise it. And this was a brilliant move by Jim Senegal. Absolutely. He never, ever raised profit. And, 
and 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 so he cut out the middlemen and so one after the other these other companies they they really had no defense against costco because they were ripping off consumers because they had this bad structure right a bad structure in business is just it's cancer it's 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 never going to fix itself a bad structure is 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 hopeless right and but things change right that's why i'm making this podcast now okay so they cut out the middlemen then what Costco did unique from Price Club was they were the very first ones, and this was Jim Cynical's idea, to have fresh fruit foods. And what that did was, it's very subtle, but what it did was it brought in daily consumers. So before, you would go in like once a month and buy dry goods at Price Club, and uh, you, know, you didn't come very often. There was very few people in the store. The stores were empty. They were making good money, but the stores were basically empty. Then Jim brought in... Uh, you, he brought in fresh foods that you would come in and you would buy on a daily basis almost. And and uh, consumers loved it. They loved it because you could go into Costco, you could buy, you know, for, for $10, you can get a huge thing because of blueberries. You know, blueberries were expensive before and hard to buy and they're little packages and they, they often were not, you know, they weren't the freshest. They were just kind of like poor quality. You know, it was difficult unless you were in a blueberry area. There was a lot of products like blueberries that that fresh that someone like Costco really brought a lot of value because you come in 10 bucks you get a huge huge like bucket of blueberries right and if you're not happy with them you go straight to get your money back and that was the other thing that Costco did it was easy 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 to get your money back this is important in the story so follow me on this so okay so they brought in fresh foods they made it very easy to refund okay the other thing Costco did which was very important pre-internet was they had a card. Now the card, a lot of people look at the card as Costco's profit because you pay a $60 fee or whatever for a yearly fee for that card. But that's not really what the card's for. The card, what the card is really for is to keep track of consumers and what they purchase. So Costco knows, for example, when you start buying new things, they know a lot about you. Like for example, they might know you're pregnant, right? And that means they know you're gonna have a baby right and they and, and they know how often you come they know how much you spend and they have that data that Costco had pre-internet was the most valuable retail data in the world nobody had that data except Costco combine that with the fact that they also had the high-end consumers and and this is one uh, funny thing I, I heard when I was in Tokyo there was a there was a barbecue and it was the uh, president of uh, was it Morgan Stanley J Japan or something he was having a barbecue and a bunch of people were over and what happened was he was out at the barbecue and uh, so <laughs> so we went out to the barbecue and and he was bragging about his barbecue he bought it at Costco in Japan and he was saying like oh I got this thing for you know whatever it was you know 30,000 yen it was a real bargain you know and the other guys were like no way 30,000 yen look at that thing and Yet the other guys who were in the conversation were other very high-end finance guys. Now, these are the kind of guys that never talk about prices. Like, they're rich. But it's Costco is almost a religion. Yeah, honestly, I've watched Costco since the very beginning. I've known Jim Senegal for 40 years. Okay, I've watched this thing since before it started. So it's almost a religion. It is a, it is a great company, right? I, I'm very pro Costco. Okay, so... They, that's what they, 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 they had this high-end consumer and they had this trust. What other company besides Costco with the president of JP Morgan or Morgan Stanley, whatever it was, be talking, bragging about his barbecue? It wasn't that he wanted to save price, money on the price. That wasn't it. It was something else. Costco is a different beast. It's not the same. He wasn't talking about the price. He, he was, this is the kind of guy who would never talk about the price. You know, he didn't even care about the price. It, was, it made him look good. It made him look smart. And that's what everybody wants to do. Once you're rich, you want to look smart. It's one of the things, right? Humanity, right? Part of the, uh, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You could put it on there somewhere on the top, right? So it filled all these needs and it brought in all these high-end people. It, it also brought in profit from the cards. It brought in the best data. It, it brought in daily consumers. It, it just, it was, you know, and, and also you had Jim Senegal releasing new information. Today, we're going to cut out the, we're going to cut out the middlemen for this new area. Now this new area. And you can come to Costco and get a lower price. And everybody bowed down. Everybody bowed down, bowed down. Everything from gasoline to, you know, the, of course, the fresh foods and everything. And then, then drugs and 
And, and every consumer was like, not only can I get a better deal, it's easier to buy. I enjoy going to Costco. Everybody likes to go to Costco, okay? People like going to Costco. It's the one store that everybody likes going to. If you watch people in Costco, you know, in different countries, I've been to Costco's all over the world. They just, people are like, they make a day out of it. Like you go to Japan, like the people drive out to the Costco and they park their car with their family and they, they spend the whole day there. They shop all day. They buy stuff. They eat out front at the, at the little uh, deli thing they got going on, you know? And so that was Costco. Okay. Along comes Amazon. Amazon comes in selling books, obviously sells more, sells more. And I think that Costco's model was so strong that nobody really saw that Costco was the real target of Amazon or one of the real targets. Jeff Bezos is very, very smart, as you know. And he saw, he saw this as a very powerful next move, which is retail. And the, the king of retail, the king of the best model is Costco. And so naturally, he's going to look at that, right? And so he, the first thing he did was consumer goods, okay? Uh, before, uh, it was a, I don't know how many years ago it was, Amazon made a big move because the shipping costs for Amazon products were quite expensive. So, for example, you would just buy a computer from Amazon. Okay, or you would buy like an expensive hard drive or you would buy like uh, something big, you know, from Amazon because the shipping cost was high. But about I don't know how many years ago it was, but there was a Amazon came up with a way that they could they could reliably uh, scale the putting a lot of products into one box. So they roboticized, totally roboticized their their warehouse. They have these little where these little robots cruising around. I'm sure you've seen the video. And it's like they zip around and they get the perfect products. They put them into the thing, kind of like Dell used to make computers to order, right? So Amazon did consumer goods. So you could buy shampoo, soap, and things like that in one package. And the price of the shipping wouldn't really kill you. So that was the first, that was the first sign that Amazon was targeting Costco. And, well, I mean, really, if you look back, they were really targeting Costco all along when they had cameras, when they had, you know, computers televisions, all these things are Costco. They're, when you first walk into Costco, what's the first thing you see? It's the electronics. What does a, what does a retail shop do when they want to sell you something? They give it to you first, right? If you go to any department store, what's on the first floor? Women's cosmetics. It's the highest profit items, right? So Costco, electronics, they're selling electronics. They did a great job. I won't go and I know a lot about Costco. I could go on about Costco for, for 10 hours, but Okay, so they started selling Amazon. So we should have known that they were targeting them. But then next, consumer goods. Then, like lately, it's like a barrage. And now we know Amazon is targeting Costco. No doubt about it. They go into fresh foods, delivery, fresh foods, right? That's exactly, and I, I don't know, I did not see one article, and I fault journalists for this because I'm, I'm not a retail analyst. I'm just a person who was involved, who saw Costco from the beginning, was very interested uh, and has a uh, long story, some, some relation. So I could see what was happening and no journalist picked it up. But when, when they started selling uh, fresh foods, this was not only targeting Costco, right? But it was out of the playbook of Costco. That's, that's a key thing is that Jim Senegal separated himself and Costco from Price Club by offering fresh foods. This was the watershed moment. This was the thing that transformed Costco into a daily place that you go, right? And that is a big, big deal because people spend more money. They buy more things when they come in every day. And so sales go up, right? So when, when Amazon brought in fresh, fresh foods for delivery, that was a big deal. But then, you know, full trader, <laughs> you got full trader because you got Je uh, Je uh, Jeff Bezos, buying Whole Foods. Now we know directly that Amazon is directly competing with retail and retail is very much Amazon is very much Walmart and Costco, right? Okay. So now who's going to, how did the, the, the consumers react? How did people react? What should everybody do? Basically now today, uh, Amazon announces, well, they didn't really announce. They did it uh, very slyly, right? 
another key piece of Costco's playbook. So Costco has a couple of playbooks. One of them was going into whole, going into fresh foods, which brought in the daily consumer. That was one of Costco's playbook in the beginning. Everybody talks about the middleman getting cut out and all that, and that was a big part of it. Definitely, that was a big part of Costco. That was a main part. But this was essential because this brought in traffic, right? Before the internet, traffic was physical traffic, cars coming in, people walking in. Now it's different, but it's the same. Traffic is exactly the same. It's the most profitable. It's the thing everybody wants. The other thing Costco did is cut out the middleman of profitable items. So Costco, what they did was they would look at all the items in the world, basically, and they would say, okay, there's like, say, 20,000 items at a typical supermarket in the old days. And they'd say, let's get the 2,000 items that are the highest profit. Okay. The, or sorry, the highest volume, right? So that was the first thing. Let's get the highest volume product so you can go to Costco, you can buy your main stuff, and then you can go shopping at the small, expensive little retail shops to get the little items that you want on top of that, right? That was kind of Costco's thing. Then after that, right, then they said, okay, fresh foods, let's bring people in more often. And then Costco, if you look at their strategy over the years, is one after the other, they're looking at niches where basically consumers are getting ripped off. And this is why everybody loves Costco so much because they're very wise about choosing areas where people are getting ripped off. So uh, one of them was drugs and supplements, right? First supplements, then drugs, because drugs were more regulated in this and that. So they brought in supplements, they brought in wine. Costco is the number one seller of wine in America. And I believe in the world, I believe Costco might be the number one in the world, but definitely in America. So. They went into these markets where you had these kind of like, whether it was hoity-toity or whether it was, you know, complex delivery, whatever the reason was, consumers were getting ripped off in their mind and consumers agreed. And so every time Costco, back when I said Jim Sinegal was God and he was, he was J, uh, Steve Jobs and he was announcing the latest thing they were going to give you a deal on, right? And so drugs was a big one. And Costco opened up supermarket, glass, making glasses, selling gasoline, uh, selling uh, uh, supplements, selling all these things that had high profit. And they're just cutting the profit down to, to Costco's standard profit margin, right? Okay, just to give you an idea of how hardcore Costco is in the old days, is if, you, if Costco bought a product for $1, okay, they would sell it. Let's just say, I'm not going to say the exact, but let's just say there was a, 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 a 10% profit. There wasn't, but let's just say there was 10%. They would sell it for $1.10. Now, let's say that tomorrow that company went bankrupt and they were forced to sell everything for 10 cents. So it was a dollar and then they sold it for $1.10 yesterday. The same product is now 10 cents, okay? Costco would start selling that same product the next day essentially for 11 cents because 10% over one 10 cents. Every other company in the world would say, literally every other retail company would say, well, we sold it for a dollar yesterday, right? So consumers will be super happy if it's 80 cents, right? You know what I mean? If it's 70 cents, if it's 90 cents, whatever, they all had different targets and they said, okay, is, consumers are gonna be happy because prices are down, right? And they were right, consumers were happy. But Costco did something I would say almost counterintuitive. They said, it ain't about making profit. It's about trust. We only make this percentage on every product and that's what we're going to do. So if it means that we're dropping the price to 11 cents from $1.10 yesterday to 11 cents today, that's what we're doing. And that was Jim Sinegal. And he pushed that and he never allowed those prices to rise. And so when you went to Costco, the reason why Costco was a religion, the reason why Costco was, was so sticky as a company is because you didn't even have to shop. You literally didn't even have to shop at Costco. You, you knew the price was going to be the best because you knew the model. Whatever uh, Costco could buy it for, they were just going to sell it for a small amount over that. So nobody even needed to shop. And that's why... I remember watching frustrated uh, journalists interview people in line at Costco, and they would, he would say, why are you buying this? You know, and they'd say, well, it's Costco. You know, that's the best price. You know? And he's like, did you shop for it? And then the guy's like, uh, no. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, well, it is the lowest price, but 
you know, you, how would you know that? <laughs> I remember watching an interview exactly on that exact uh, exchange happened uh, when it came, when Costco started selling gasoline. And it was like, it was hilarious to me because it was so true, you know, and you had the haters that were like, how can you trust a company, right? But Costco was a very reliable, very trustworthy company. They just were. And that's, and everybody knew it. And so that's why everybody went in, right? Now, Costco had another thing going for it. The other thing, Costco, they had so many things going for it. They had the best buyers in the world. But they also had Jim Senegal. And Jim Senegal was definitely, with no, no doubt about it, was a genius, right? And so Jim said, we are going to treat our employees well. And this is what Costco got the most, uh, you know, press for, is, is treating, you know, paying, the, paying the workers well. And so you had the highest satisfaction with working at Costco. And even if today, even if you, even today, if you go to Costco and you walk around, look at the employees, you'll see some pretty darn happy employees. I mean, you don't have to read any kind of survey, just walk in any Costco and look at the employees, just go look at them and then go over to Walmart and look at the employees there, right? It's pretty obvious that the, 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 the employees are, they're efficient at Costco and they're also happy and they're paid well. And they're, they're, they, they don't, they're not afraid their, their company's going to, you know what I mean? That they're going to get screwed tomorrow. And so this has also been a very big, important thing for Costco because in the end, goodwill is super important to a company. Okay. Goodwill trumps a lot of other things for, for companies. It, it, you really, when you trust a company, when you have goodwill, people, you know, this is the most difficult thing for a, cust- a company to achieve is trust and goodwill. You know, and that goodwill, a lot of the goodwill comes from treating people well and those guys talking about you and those guys shopping at the company and those guys not talking bad about you, what they w- would do. If you look at any Walmart employees, you know, it's a completely different thing, right? You have a lot of unhappy people getting paid very low price. Um, and even when they do pay them well, you don't have the same amount of satisfaction because, as I said in the beginning, the system was set up. You can pay somebody one guy well and the other guy poorly. You're not going to have two happy people or one happy person and one sad. You're going to have a, you're going to have a mess, right? And that's kind of like what you have at most retail companies. Whereas Costco somehow went above the fray. We're going to pay you all well. We're going to make you all happy. That improves the feeling at the stores. It infu- it improves the uh, the you know cons- like the Costco employees buy stuff at Costco. I can tell you that for a fact. You go to any Costco employee's house, you're going to see Costco stuff all over the place, okay? Stacks of stuff from Costco, right? They buy from their own company, right? They like their own company. Now, this is good, but in today's world of going online, this could end up being not a good thing for Costco. Okay, everything changes, okay? And companies need to change. They need to, they need to go. In this case, we have a predator, we have a predator who is attacking Costco and Costco as a non online company. Okay. Costco has a website and the, and the website sells a lot. The last I checked, it sells much more than the average store sells. Okay. So it is very successful. The online store is successful and luckily they got that through. I know the story, but I'm not going to say it, but to actually have a website was a difficult thing for Costco. And now it's obviously very successful, but Costco is no Amazon and the differences are extreme, okay? When you look at the structure of the companies, uh, you, obviously I said before, if you look at an Amazon warehouse, it's an automated robotic on-demand you know, thing. There's, robots don't steal. Robots do what they say, what they're supposed to do. They cruise around, they get room, you know, number one, two, three, four, five, six, six, eight, eight, eight. They get that number of product and they put it over here on this shelf. And then this goes back here and gets another one and puts it there, you know. And so, and you have cameras everywhere and you have locked doors and you have no buddy but personnel, you know, managers inside the warehouse. And so Costco, Walmart, or sorry, Amazon has a fantastic, uh, what do you call it, like, control of theft there's basically very little theft at a, at a warehouse like that it's all camera it's all you know being filmed if there's nobody else in there now costco also has pretty good theft compared to most companies because they have that guard at the outside right and the employees uh are happy so you do have much lower theft inside of a costco but still you have you know Hundreds or whatever it is, I'm not sure how many stores there are now, Costco stores, but there's a lot of them. And each one has different levels of security, right? 
in Japan, you can have different than in Taiwan and in Korea and in, in, in Australia and America. It's good in, you know, UK, uh, Maui, they're all going to be a little different, right? And it's more difficult to control, right? Amazon has a really solid base for managing retail products, right? They have a better model in the end. They have a better, easier to control, more scalable model, right? In today's day and age, right? So let's go into what Costco, Costco is getting picked off. That's what I'm saying. Shit's getting picked off, guys. One at a time, Costco's bread and butter is getting picked off by Amazon, right? Sorry for the bad word. Okay, they're, they're, but, it, but I, I'm very, uh, like, I love Costco. I love Jim. I love, and, I, and I'm seeing, you know, like, I'm seeing, like, danger, clouds on the horizon, like, serious clouds on the horizon. Now, what are the clouds on the horizon? Let's look at the clouds on the horizons, right? One of the clouds on the horizon, of course, you have Amazon, right? And Amazon is going directly into retail and you're seeing some radical moves by Jeff Bezos. And what does Costco have to fight those moves? They really don't have much because Costco is not an, it's not a Silicon Valley company. It's not an IT company. They have a great IT system. They did a great job. Uh, you know, that was one of the, one of the key innovations is, 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 is computerization of everything much better than traditional retailers. But these is, we're talking a 30 year old story now, right? In today's day and age, it it's, it's, it's doesn't compare to what Amazon's got going on. And also, Amazon is purely high-tech workers, right? That's, what, that's what you got up in Seattle. You know, they're just getting building after building of programmers. And, you know, these guys are serious. They're, 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 they're like coming up with new ways to do things all the time. And the other thing Amazon has that Costco doesn't have, it, but is also Costco's bread and butter, and that is data, Okay. Like I said, with the Costco membership warehouse, they had the best data pre-internet in the world. And that's why, that's why they were such a magic company because they kind of knew what you wanted in advance and they had it sitting there for you. And you felt like as a consumer, this is amazing. Like when you went into the usual store there, you had to go through all this stuff to find what you wanted, right? Costco was just like, oh, I want this, I want this, I want this. That's how the consumers felt, right? And that was because of data. That was an early sign of the incredible power of consumer data, and Costco did it best. I don't know if Costco did it on purpose. I really don't know if it was pure luck because they, they wanted to sell their membership cards. You know, I don't know if that was that. I remember, I remember when, I, uh, when I wanted to bring something back to Costco, and I went into the Costco, and I said, you know, uh, I lost my receipt. And then the guy said, hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> you got your card, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, we can see on your card what you bought. So go over to the, get your money back. So I did. And went and boom, he gave me my money back. No problem at all. It was because they had the data on me. They knew. They knew, right? They knew everything about me, right? They knew my move to Japan. They knew, you know, that I had a company because I was buying company stuff, right? They knew I was buying higher volume, right? They knew, they knew all this stuff about me. And now who has the best data? No doubt about it. Amazon has the best data, okay, in America, right? Amazon has the best consumer data in the world now. So they're one at a time. The key fundamental things that Costco did right, Amazon is doing better. And I'm not seeing anybody realize this. So that's why I'm making this, because I think it's really important. I think for Costco survival, they got to make some radical moves. And I see Jim Senegal as making one more big move. He's already retired, but he's like honorary CEO based. I don't know what this exact title is, but... Jim's still around and Jim is a competitor. Okay. Jim Senegal's a competitor. I remember watching, I remember watching Jim play uh, racquetball back in 1979. I was waiting for him. I was getting a ride home or something. I don't know. But I was sitting there and I was watching him and he was uh, playing racquetball and they had the glass, the glass walls. It was in Laguna de Gal. We're sitting there and I was watching him play racquetball and I was totally shocked because I was not such a competitor growing up. I, I really, like as a kid, I just didn't care if I won or lost that much. I was, I was kind of weird that way. I, but I watched Jim and man, he was playing like a absolute beast. Like he was the nicest guy talking to me, but watching him play racquetball, I was like almost scared. I was like, this guy's holy moly. Like, he, you know, and he won, right? He beat the guy. He destroyed all the guys he was playing against. And it was a very competitive racquetball uh, 
uh, what do you call it, racquetball club, you know, and it was that, that, that was what all the guys did. All the like high powered guys went in there. They played against each other. And Jim was the king. Jim was very good. I don't know if he was the king, but he was very he was very solid and he was a real competitor. I'm not saying he was the most talented at racquetball of all. I don't know about that. I'm not a, I'm not a racquetball expert, but he definitely was very competitive and he was going to win. Right. And so I think that Jim understands what's going on here, just like just like Steve Jobs left, uh, you know, left Apple, but of course he left because he passed away. Jim is still around and Jim is, I think, ready for, I, I hope, one more big move. And here's what I think they should do. I think that Costco should merge with Alibaba, okay? The Chinese uh, giant that had the third biggest IPO in history in America in the, uh, on, the, on the New York Stock Exchange, right? Uh, or was it the Nasdaq? I'm not sure. Either way, it was the third biggest IPO in history, right? Huge IPO, right? Why? It's because they were taken on Amazon, right? So you got you got Amazon is on the radar of Chinese companies, and it's being copied one after the other. So in Jeff Bezos' uh, defense, I would say that okay, he's going after Costco now. Maybe his friends are at Costco, but in some ways, Jeff Bezos is also under the gun. He is also on the defense against these Chinese giants. And I lived in China for a long time. I speak Mandarin. I, I watched these companies grow up around me. A lot of my friends, one of my friends was one of the early employees at Alibaba, one of the first, uh, I think, five employees. I don't know. He's in the very beginning. And he told me a lot of stuff about Amazon. So I've been watching Amazon from a lot, from the very beginning, going to the, uh, or sorry, Alibaba, going to the Alibaba headquarters in Hangzhou, and checking it out, right? And hearing all these stories from my friend, right? So what is going on here? And the average American really doesn't know Chinese check giants are so serious. And I want to kind of mention that in this interview, in this uh, podcast, because it's important. It's important for you. It's important for the American retail market is, okay, so we got, I'm going to put this link below. And I want you to watch this. Uh, but basically, Alibaba has gone into they opened uh, retail stores. One of them is in Shanghai, which the video above uh, is is in Hema. It's called Hema, which is a store. And I believe this is the reason why Alibaba bought Whole Foods is they are essentially copying Alibaba. In many ways, okay, don't get me wrong. In many ways, Amazon is leading Alibaba. Okay, I think the technology behind the website from my friend who worked there in the beginning, I would say definitely Alibaba is superior in many, many ways, okay? But there are ways that Alibaba is ahead of Amazon. And one of the big ways is, it's because of the Chinese consumer, really, and the, and, and the peculiarities, you know, the, the proclivities of the Chinese unique market. But one of them is that they have their own payment on, online payment system. And this payment system is not like Apple Pay. Apple Pay is a total joke compared to Alipay. Really, it's not even, no one even uses it. Did you use it today? No, right? Did you use it yesterday? No. If you're talking about Alipay, you used it today, you used it eight times today, and used it six times yesterday, and you used another online payment system from Tencent, from WeChat, because you basically didn't carry, if you're Chinese in mainland China, you basically don't even carry cash anymore because you don't need it. It's literally an all online payment in China now. And, and, Americans don't realize what that means, and I'm going to go into that a little bit, the cashless society. In fact, let me, let me branch off and just say this story real quick. Okay, here's an article from uh, uh, South China Morning Post, and basically, uh, this is a, a person, uh, Peter Guy, who is against online cashless societies, and basically saying it'll destroy our privacy and freedom. And Americans believe that Online, having all your money online is going to be very, very dangerous and dystopian. And this is like absolutely shot through in the Western world. And so the average person, like I am, a, I am a libertarian. So I am against big government. I like Harry Brown. I like Harry Brown very much. But at the same time, I also look at, I look at society as a whole. And sometimes there are times to break your beliefs in the in if there is a greater thing to achieve or a greater good so w the way that i look at it, it with cashless society okay i understand it's a very risky thing i understand totally it's 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 we're going in like serious shit here this is really serious stuff having the government have total cash control your cash puts you 
you know, really under the boot if they want to put you under the boot. But what is happening in the market? Let's look at the ecosystem very quickly here of how things are working, right? So China is a cashless society pretty much already. Okay. And I got to tell you, consumers love it. Consumers in China, you have a lot of things in China. You got you have a you have a you have a pretty authoritarian government. You have state-owned enterprises controlling 50% of the economy. You have a lot of things that people talk about, but you also have something that people don't talk about that much, which is a freewheeling, intelligent, flexible Chinese populace that doesn't mess around. Doesn't uh, they don't. Uh, they, they, they try new things. They're very open-minded. You see 70-year-old women paying things online. You, see, you know what I mean? You see, you see, you see like, you know, very elderly people using uh, social media. You see, you see, you have this flexibility. You have this um, fluidity. Every country's got a unique population, okay? China, Chinese society is unique, okay? And the Chinese, so I, I lived in, for 16 years, sorry, 10 years in China, owned a business, I worked, I helped Groupon to go to China. I watched so many things, un, un, you know, kind of unroll in China. And I, I, I believe that the Chinese consumers are the most flexible, fast moving online consumers in the world by far. And Americans are very slow, very uh, afraid of things. They're afraid of new things compared to the Chinese. And, and that that really hurts that hurts the companies, the American companies. But in the end, the reason why I'm saying this is because I think what is going to happen is that the world will go cashless no matter what. So whichever country develops those cashless products is going to control the retail and your money. Okay, much like Visa and, and MasterCharge were invented in the US and they went global. And if you're not American, you understand what that means is Americans came in and they controlled retail in your country. Americans don't really understand that. There's a lot of reason why we're so, it's such a wealthy country. They went into other countries with better models and these other countries had more conservative societies that were afraid of new things. The Americans changed faster, you know, created things faster. And then those things won out and consumers in the end chose those things. So even if governments tried to keep them out, Consumers wanted an easier life. They wanted an easier way to do things. And the American payment systems was the best in the world, and they took over the world. Anywhere you go, there's Visa and MasterCard, right? And one of my friends was a roommate with a, one of the heir of the Visa empire in USC. And I mean, this guy had money like you can't even believe uh, back in the 80s, right? So, okay, so, so we are going to a cashless society worldwide. The Chinese are leading in this one in a very big way. And, 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 and that this is what consumers will choose. I, I liken it to electricity. Okay, when electricity first came out, a lot of people were afraid of it because they said, if I become dependent on electricity, okay, then uh, what if it stops? What, what if it doesn't happen one day? What if one day, I, you know, you guys are stupid for going to electricity. I'm going to keep my candles because this is reliable ever since the beginning of time. People can light a candle. It's very simple. It's stupid to go to electricity because you're getting dependent on something that could stop. And, and when it does stop, you'll have nothing, right? And it was the same argument that happened when, when they started computerizing uh, retail, when they started computerizing the military. Everybody was like, no, don't do it because if it stopped, if it didn't work, you're going to be screwed. And that, was a, that argument is actually true, okay? So I'm not saying that this is a stupid argument. It is actually true. But... There are societal trends that just can't be denied. They can't be stopped. There are certain things that are just going to happen, like no matter what. And this is what happened with electricity. And electricity is still getting bigger. We're seeing electric cars now. We're seeing electric backup uh, batteries. We're seeing electric airplanes. We're seeing electric automated boats being developed. Electricity is still gaining all these years later. So that's why I say it's, it's a relevant conversation. And, and it, but with all of these advances, we also are more dependent on the system, right? Now we have everything on the internet. It was the same argument. If you go on the internet, what if it's hacked? What if it stops? What if, you know, what if, what if, what if? But consumers said, hey, I'm willing to accept that. Now, the Chinese didn't really have a choice, to be honest. They, the, the, the government has a, a method, has a way 
of getting the Chinese consumers to do stuff. Um, it's not a blanket method. I don't want to put it that way because the Chinese consumers, they do stand up. Uh, the Chinese individuals do stand up and they do win sometimes. And the government does have to react to that. And anybody who knows China well understands exactly what I'm talking about. It is, even in China, it is a, it is a give and take. The government can only take so much. If, it, if they try something, it doesn't work. The government will slowly, quietly, without, you know, without admitting it, they're going to take, uh, they're going to, they're going to stop that thing for now. They might try it again, but they're going to, what I'm saying is there is a give and take in every society. And in this one, they offered it to the Chinese and the Chinese said, yes. And if you go to China, if you, if you, I, I think somebody should go to China. I've seen a couple of online videos, but I think this is very relevant for, for almost U.S. security, like military, because what you're going to see is you're going to see if you go to China, you're not going to be able to participate in the revolution because you don't have a Chinese bank account because you don't have the approvals. You don't have a Chinese uh, like a social security type number. You don't have all these things that you can do to really participate. But even as a visitor, you will be able to do a couple of things that you can't do in the U.S. And when people live in China, OK, I'm talking foreigners and they go abroad they feel like they've gone back to the stone ages. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One of the things is with, with WeChat is everything you're automatically logged into. Okay. So for example, if you want to send money, you're logged in. If you want to move buy stock, you're logged in. If you want to send your wife some roses, you're logged in. If you want to check, uh, buy a train ticket to go somewhere, through the, 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 the Chinese uh, National Railway, you're logged in. You just one click, pick the, pick the, pick the one, pick buy now, you're in. You got your ticket, they'll send you a, 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 U, uh, sorry, a uh, QR code, which you can see up there, and you go to the train and you show that, beep, you go in, you take the train, right? Everything is like that. And so this is what consumers love. And they know they're giving up uh, they, the, the Chinese consumers are very, very sharp. They know they're giving up private data. They know that the, the government could theoretically close their account. They know that, but they also know that this is what makes life easier for them. They're willing to sacrifice that for that. And so what happens long term? What happens to countries where the consumers do not accept these new technological advances? What happens, the, the, the advances that are destined to succeed, what happens is other countries develop them and then those other country systems come and take over. So countries that were against having a visa card because of this and that, now they have American visa cards, right? They have US banks controlling their destiny. And that's what's gonna happen if the Americans don't get their crap together and start to understand and study what's the, the, the current uh, shift and how cool this, this online uh, cash stuff is. Again, as a libertarian, I, I understand if you're listening to this podcast, you're like, oh, this guy is, you know, totally like promoting this, uh, you know, authoritarian 1984, this and that. Look, just try it. I'm not saying it's the best way. You got to go try it yourself. Once you use it, you have to experience it. It's like the internet. Before the internet, no one could understand what it was going to, how it was going to change their life because they're like, why do I need the internet? I got the post office. It's very reliable. They go, they go in sleet or snow and there's no reason to, to, to send these other things online where it's dangerous and difficult and they, the other guy needs a computer. And, you know, we couldn't, you, some things you need to experience to really understand. That's what I'm saying. I'm not selling you on this. I'm saying like, if you go to China, if you, if someone, if, if you get a Chinese to let you borrow their phone for a day and use it, you're going to, you're going to be like, holy crap, <laughs> that guy was right. This is like better way to live. It's easier. It's, it's way, way better. And you can send money like it's almost like Bitcoin. You send it automatically, instantly, almost no cost. I mean, it's just like it's, it's amazing. You can go to a like when I go to dinner, you go to dinner in China. You're all sitting there. You all order food, blah, blah, blah. You eat. And then if you split up the bill, you can just uh, just click, you know, split up the bill and uh age or you know and then they're like boom it just everybody gets you send it to everybody gets a percentage everybody pays uh it's you can or one guy can pay and then you can send him yours you know you can just send him like instantly like how much was mine oh you know it was this much okay he's got it and everybody sends it it's all done it's easy it's very easy to pay it yourself it's easy to split it it's easy to it's just easy to do everything in china whether it's like 
you know, like I said, transportation or purchasing or whatever. So basically what I'm saying in this podcast is, and this is related, this is very related to Costco, is things are coming together. There's a gathering storm and I want to put it all together for you, right? So online payment systems are the future and guess who's very good at it? And that's Alibaba, back to Alibaba. They're very good at it. They have Alipay, which is the second, it might be the largest, it's, it's one of the two, there's two giants, there's Tencent, there's Alibaba, uh, but the Tencent's a totally another beast. Uh, let's talk about, it. Alibaba is the key one here, it's the relevant one for Costco. So, back to, back to Alibaba, back to China in uh, retail. What's happening? Okay, what's happening is retail in China is again leapfrogging the US. Okay, they're taking the best, they get to see the models in the U.S. All the Chinese have been to America, right? All the business guys, they've gone there, they've used everything, they, they appreciate everything. And then they come back and say, what could we do better? What, could, what, 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 you know, what, what, what was good about it? What could, we, what could we do better in our market, right? And what they did was they come up with this company called Huma. Now, Huma is a Alibaba online store. Uh, and what you do at Huma is... As you walk around the store, it's a combination of online and offline. Everything is there. So you can either sit in your house, go to Chama, order stuff, and within 30 minutes, it will come to your doorstep. Okay, you can go beep, 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 shampoo, soap, whatever, blah, 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 uh, vegetables, burrito, uh, fried rice, whatever. They're going to bring it to your door 30 minutes later. That's Chama. Now, if you physically go to Chama, that's where it's more impressive. If you go to physically go to Chama, you walk around the store, you click on things as you go through with your own smartphone using QR codes, right? Beep, 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 beep. And then, and then as you go to the door, you don't even pick up the product. You don't have to carry anything. There's no carts. You just beep, 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 beep. Now this is what, this is what Whole Foods, it is what Amazon is trying to copy, okay? Amazon is in a, per, they, they know that Chama and Alibaba are ahead, they know. Because, like I said, they're on the radar of the Chinese, right? So, uh, and bear with me for all these stories because these are all going to come together. Okay, so at Chama, you, you, you beep, 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 you get all the products you want. You come to the door, they're all waiting for you. All the products that you beeped, right? Boom, take it. Now, what's even better about it? What's even better? And this is another one-up Costco that Costco doesn't even realize. Okay, what makes Costco so different than other companies is that you can eat there. They have that like very reasonable food court that everybody kind of likes to sit down and eat. You know, <laughs> you know, I know even Jim Senegal sit there eating a hot dog, right? You know, people just go there, they get some food, they sit down, they eat, um, and it's kind of like a chance to sit down, rest your legs, you know, and uh, you know, maybe before you go in or after, usually after you go out, you got all your products there, right? So what you do is in, in Chema is even better. So do you eat the crappy food they have at Costco thing? No, like Costco has no, no vegan food, right? It's got, no, it's got no healthy food. It's just got hot dogs and, you know, the chicken bake and, and uh, the pizza slice, right? Well, Chema, what you do as you go through is you, you say, you say you hit, uh, you go to the seafood section, right? You, you pick the, the crabs that you want, you pick whatever you want. They cook them for you the way you want. So when you come out, they're, they're ready for you. So you, you, as you go through, you beep, you order, and then as you, as, you, as you come out, they have the tables ready for you, and you, have, you, grab, you get your food, you sit down at the table, you can have some beers, you can drink, your, drink some beers, have your seafood. Uh, they, they cooked it for you. The stuff that you just bought you know, 10 minutes ago, now you're sitting down and eating it fresh. Now, why, why is that better than Costco? It's better than Costco for a lot of reasons. One of the reasons is that, like I said, it's healthy and there's more choice because you can basically get anything in the store, essentially. You can order anything you want in the store and then go eat it right away. So that the variety and the consumer choice is a big difference because at Costco, if there was two Costcos, uh, let's just imagine this, you go to Costco tomorrow, there's one uh, food court thing that has pizza slices, chicken bake, okay, and salad. And there's another one where you can have the guy take your sashimi from the sashimi section, slice it up, have it on a table with all the, the fixings, 
and then your chicken can be cooked. You, you buy the chicken super cheap. They, they cook it, they spice it the way you want, the flavor you want, they got it all ready for you, and you come outside, you can eat the food that you want to eat, that you just picked. You don't have to make do with what they had there. You can eat the healthy food that you want to eat, or if you want to eat more unhealthy, whatever it is that you want to eat, they're going to make it for you. They're going to have it ready for you as you come out. Which one would you choose? Of course, you're going to choose the stuff you want to eat. You're only eating that stuff because it, because it's convenient, you know, and because the location is great and it's right there. But if you could have both, like for myself, if I could have some better food, I would definitely choose that. Right? There's no 100% consumers are not going to choose all pizza slice, all chicken bake if they have the whole store to choose from, right? So that's one thing that's better. But the other thing is it's kind of insidious. But Costco started, like I said in the beginning, with fresh food. Okay, that was the big innovation. But which is more fresh? Like I remember going to Costco in Japan. I'd go to Costco in Chiba and I would drive my car or motorcycle, depending on the day, and I would buy the food. I would eat out front. I'd eat whatever kind of they had at the food court, which I didn't want to eat again, but it was still good enough for me to eat it. But again, now we're getting to the new level. So we have to be honest with ourselves. The food, I didn't want to eat it. I like healthy food and I didn't want to eat pizza, sliced pizza, even though I know it's good and even I know the price is good. I'd prefer to have something more healthy, right? And the stuff that was in my cart was the stuff I really wanted to eat, right? But I can't make it. I couldn't get it ready. So I would eat. Then I would drive. But to get back from Chiba to my house often took more than an hour because there's traffic and, you know, it depends if it's, you know, rush hour, whatever. So the food was getting old in my car. So that fresh, quote unquote, fresh food is getting less fresh. You know, it looks great inside of Costco, but when you bring it to your house, sometimes it's not as fresh, right? This is what Amazon and this is what Alibaba and Huma are doing even better because Amazon will take your food in a, uh, what do you call it? It's in a refrigerated car to your door. So the beer comes and the beer is cold when it gets to your house, right? When you get the beer from Costco, it's already going to be warm or it was warm from the beginning, right? Alibaba, Amazon, what they do is, is that they keep it, they deliver it to you in 30 minutes, but they have it in a, in a container that keeps it warm, keeps it cool, whatever it's supposed to be. And then you get it directly at your house. And so naturally, not only is it more ready to eat, but also it's fresher. Okay. That's, that's what Costco's got. One of their big, big Big weakness is, is that you're driving and what happens if you have to do an errand on the way home or you have to pick up your kid? Have you ever done that where you go to Costco, you buy all this fresh stuff and then you have to do a couple of errands and you forget, you get a call, you have to pick up somebody and then you, what is the stuff doing? It's sitting in your car, getting older by the minute, by the second, you know? If you ever watch bacteria, it rapidly ex it, you know, explodes. If you watch bacteria under a microscope, it, the minute it gets outside of the refrigerator. So that's what happens to food. And that's what happens to your fresh food from Costco, right? So fresh is still the concept, but more fresh. People want more fresh. They want more variety. And so we got, we got this huma and uh, you can, I'll put the video down below. You should watch it. It's very, very, very enlightening about uh, what's going on. Now we got Jack Ma here. Jack Ma is very smart. He's very radical. He makes decisions very quickly. Uh, and, and to be, you know, full disclosure here, I'm not a huge fan of Jack Ma. You know, I, I wasn't, I, I like uh, Pony Ma, actually, the, the, the president of uh, Tencent. I, I really respect his, his, his uh, judgment. Uh, but Jack Ma is, uh, he, he's a bit of a dark horse. He's coming out with some smart stuff these days. And I see him as a radical enough guy and in control of the company enough that he could do something like buy Costco. I think that this is the brilliant move by Jack Ma and it's the brilliant move by Costco. Why? Why should uh, Alibaba buy Costco? Okay, we got Jeff Bezos coming in in every area of Costco. They're coming in one at a time, drugs, fresh foods, retail and Costco is just sitting there taking it. They're just taking it. They're, you know, you can only, it's, it's, it's like uh, Tom Brady getting sacked yesterday, you know, Thursday night getting sacked like a million times. He's 40 years old. There's only so many sacks he can take, right? There's going to be a time he's going to not be able to take any more sacks, right? 
sack after sack after slam after slam after slam, right? That's what Costco is taking right now from, from, from Alibaba. And these are not just slams. These are serious market niches that Costco has basically almost, you know, to themselves. They're the number one wine seller, right? Drugs that people go and buy all their prescription drugs from Costco because they get the better price, right? Same with glasses, same with everything, right? So many things, so many niches, one after the other. Well, Amazon's coming in, taking them away, and Costco can't copy Amazon, okay? This is one big mistake that people make. And I'm going to tell you my own personal experience with this one. It's just a personal story, but I hope it resonates. Okay, so before I came to, to Thailand, I needed, I wanted to buy a cheap computer that I could take to Thai coffee shops and then leave on the table when I went to the bathroom. So, like, I come and I work online, so I, I like, I don't want to be worried about my computer. I don't, I don't want to have the latest, you know, MacBook Pro all jazzed up and turbocharged and then leave it on the table and then somebody takes it when I go to the bathroom, right? But I knew that something cheap from it, from Walmart, uh, I could just leave it. I could go to the, I could go to the, uh, I could go to the uh, coffee shops and I could just leave it and I wasn't too worried about it. If someone stole my backpack, it's like whatever, you know. I'll just get another one, right? You know, get a few hundred buck computer, right? So that's what I did. I, I went. And I, and I saw that Walmart was making a big push. This is three years ago. I sorry, two years ago. They're making a push to copy Amazon, supposedly. So I said, okay, all right, I'll buy that, yeah. And so I ordered an online computer and I went uh, to pick it up. I had a certain store I was supposed to go to. So I went to that store in Irvine. And uh, when I got there, nobody knew what I was talking about. So I had ordered the computer. I showed them my receipt. I had paid for the computer. And nobody at the store knew what the hell I was talking about. Like literally they were just like, what? And then I showed him the receipt. So the guy goes in the back and he goes, we don't have any of those. And I was like, give me the manager. Cause it was the day before I was leaving for Thailand and I had already paid for it. So I got the manager and I just, and he, he went back and he looked through, he had like three guys go through all their uh, inventory. And then he said, he, he came to me and it was like, it was, it was getting late. It was like one in the morning already. It was a 24 hour Walmart. And he said to me, he said, look, we don't have it. He says, and I, and I, and I, and he was being, get being pretty cool. I said, look, I, I said, is this common? You know, like, you know what I mean? Cause, cause I knew the robotic better uh, managed, better calculated, better inventory of Amazon was almost perfect. And I knew that Walmart has real people back there counting things and i've done inventory for retail before and i can tell you that you can get lazy about it you know it's not it's not like a robot it's like you got human beings out there who don't care that much taking inventory at a company like walmart not a robot like you do have at an amazon warehouse and the and the, and the, the manager finally replied he said look this happens all the time he goes this is like so frustrating for me he says because people buy online they think we have it we don't, we don't have a good way to keep track of the inventory. He said, I'm super sorry. He says, let me give you your money back and I'll make sure that you get it. I'll send you a personal email, make sure that you know, you know that when you're in Thailand, you got your money back. Don't worry about it. And I was like, okay, cool. And because he was so cool about it, but, but it was in, it was, it was, it was very telling because a retail store with a number of like warehouses everywhere can never compete with an automated centralized warehouse, which is set up from the beginning to be airtight and completely beyond human reach. You know what I mean? Basically robot controlled, right? And, and computer organized and computer inventoried, right? So I, that was a good wake up call for me because I, I read online this BS about supposedly Walmart is gonna compete with Amazon. And I'm like, that's never gonna happen, right? Well, now you got some new, there's some new things that's relevant to this conversation is that Google and at home, I think it's called Google Home and, and Walmart are now going to partner. So they're going to try something new. Walmart's going to try to partner with Google and sell their products online. Amazon, Google doesn't really have any choices on this one. They, they need to start selling more stuff online. They got to compete with Amazon. They know it. And then they know that Walmart has a lot of products, right? But it's not really a great strategy because it, it can't go on forever. Kind of like when I when I saw the first time that Walmart was going to become Amazon, I was like, no way, because I know the structure of Amazon. I know the way they're set up. There's no way that Walmart's going to be able to compete. And I, and I personally don't think there's any hope for this other partnership with Google and Walmart. I, I'm not saying it won't make some money. It's going to make some money. It's going to make a lot of sales. But long term, it, it's, it's not the right model. What is the long term model? The long term model is Alibaba 
and Amazon. This is the model for the future, right? It is the model and it's the model that everybody chooses. And I want to add in one thing here is that just like there was that barbecue story I told you about the president of J, uh, I forgot if it was JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, bragging about his barbecue. You had a, you had a high end consumer at Costco. Amazon has taken, they have prime and the prime is the exact same consumer. So they have a level of trust and that's why people buy on Alibaba or sorry, Amazon because they trust it. Okay. Trust is the biggest thing. You can have cheaper prices, supposedly faster times, but if you don't have the consumer's trust, they're going to go to Costco because Costco has trust. There's, if there's one thing Costco has in spades is trust to the consumer, right? And it's for good reason. Okay. So Amazon, Alibaba, what does Alibaba want to do? Alibaba. Okay. Quick, quick history. Alibaba and all the big giants is basically four giants in China, online giants, Baidu, Tencent, uh, Alibaba, let's just say three for now. There's major behemoths that control everything. They're huge. They buy all the startups. They're, 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 they're just voracious. They, and they compete like mad. They compete in China. The competition in China is one of the main reasons why foreign companies don't succeed in China. It is not the only reason. And there is government interference, and I don't like it. And there is hacking and theft and a lot of other things. But this is what it, people often focus on. But and, and I am saying that that is an absolutely essential thing to think about and needs to be uh, very much on the uh, platform of U.S. politicians. But that aside, you have another aspect of China. And it's the, same, it's the same aspect you had in Japan. I was living in Japan during the bubble when Americans were trying to sell cars in, in Japan. And there was a closed market, but there also was something else in Japan, which people didn't really realize is you had the most intense competition between Japanese companies that you didn't have. It's like in Asia, in, in Japan and China, it's like, it's like no gloves. There's no gloves. These companies, they just, they go for each other so brutally that the Americans cannot even really understand. They really don't know how tough it is to compete inside a market like China, where you have 1.4 billion people all trying to be the best, all trying to outsmart the other guy. You have competition from all those people. Part of it is evolution. When you have more people, you have three, four times the population and they're all competing. You also have a lower level of poverty, which people are going to compete more, just like a boxer who has nothing to lose. He's going to fight, fight, fight. Whereas a middle class kid has a difficult time getting that same motivation to get punched in the face over and over and risk mad cow disease and all the things. Or was it CTE? Sorry, CTE from the brain problems. Whereas that kid from the ghetto is just going to go in there. Chinese, they're more like that. And competition is tougher in China. It's more brutal. It's more cutthroat. And so companies that win in China are very tough. Okay. Just on a just period. They're just very tough. So Alibaba, now they want to go to, they, they had this huge IPO, right? They have tons of cash, right? They've already established some trust in America. The best decision is for Jack Ma to call up Jim Senegal and set up a meeting and to purchase Costco in some kind of a some kind of a merger purchasing situation. Costco has no defense against Amazon. They really don't. They can't go the way of the internet sales. They can't do it. They don't have the infrastructure. They don't have the employees. Costco employees are great. They're the most loyal. They are happy, like I said, but they're not the same as a programmer who's on the cutting edge of the latest light, you know, the, the, the latest app, uh, whatever the, uh, the language is. Right. And, and they're not, you know what I mean? They're not, they're not, they're not it workers. What to beat Amazon, Amazon, you need to be the same level. Amazon is very tough company and they are d just rolling over, you know, one after the other rolling over uh, companies. The only way and this would be very good for, for Alibaba too. Alibaba wants an end to America, okay? Essentially what happened, okay, quick little history here. All the Chinese companies, like I said, they're very competitive. They got very big. The government went to them a few years ago, and this was a hush-hush meeting. And they basically said, look, you know, you can't take everything in China. You go out of China 
and, and, and take markets outside China. You know, go and compete outside China. You guys already have great companies. You already have gotten as much as you're going to get here, essentially. And, and the Chinese were like, I got it. Okay. And, they, they, and, and so Alibaba bought Lazada in Thailand. And they started buying companies overseas. And, and that's when Alibaba made their IPO over in America. They said, okay, it's time. We got to go. We got to. And it made sense. It wasn't just the government telling them what to do. It was also very wise also. Is that they kind of had gotten as far as they're going to get. And for these companies to grow, they had to go global. Right. And so it's in the Chinese government's interest. It's in Alibaba's interest to take over the U.S. retail market. It would be very that would be an incredible juicy thing for the Chinese. Now, Costco has the great locations. They have the great system. They have the trust. They have the data, okay? They, they do still have great data, okay? It's not as good as Amazon, but it's still fantastic data. The Costco data is older and, and is very trustworthy, right? And, and, and also, it's from the higher-end consumers. It's from the, like I said, the prime type of people. All the, the Costco... People are basically prime type of people, right? So you, they're paying more. They're buying the better stuff, right? And that's and that's and that's why you have the number one uh, wine seller uh, in Costco, right? Selling like very expensive wine and diamond rings, and you see like, you know, kind of luxury product after the other uh, that Costco goes into, and everybody's like, oh, how can they do that? But it's Costco, right? Where are you going to buy a diamond ring? If you know that you can get the best ring from a reliable company, that gives your money back in two seconds, and it's something that's very highly marked up and it's almost a commodity because let's face it, a wedding ring, it's essentially a commodity. You know, you have a unique product, but you also have something that you want the best diamond, right? You want the best quality product for the best price and so does your wife. So does your future wife, right? She wants it too. She's like, get me, get me the best one. You don't go waste money at some stupid store that's overcharged and you're right, give me the best one, right? So, so they, 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 they have this like, Costco has this incredible range it's like it's like uh, Costco is kind of like uh, Freddie Mercury from Queen. They, they, you know, he had this he had this vocal range which was just phenomenal, right? He could go from you know opera to like you know he went all the way up and all the way down, and he, and that's why he was so great. Costco is a bit like that. They have this incredible range that I don't think the average person really understands the range that Costco has of ability to sell products based on the trust that they have established in the last 30 years of doing a great job, right? So these are all things that Alibaba doesn't have. And they're all things that Alibaba needs. Now, Jeff Bezos, on the other hand, is attacking Costco one after the other. And he, and he knows that Costco is just like a ship taking hit after hit after hit. He knows there's only a matter of time until it's gonna go down. Now, I'm not saying that Costco is like a sinking ship. Costco, this could be 20, 30 years, 40, whatever it is, I don't know. But I'm just saying it can't go on forever, right? And also, it can't, it, it can't morph. Costco can't morph into Amazon, and everybody knows it, right? You can't get those guys, those guys on the floor to start programming your latest app, right? They just don't, can't do it. That's not their specialty, right? Guess who, guess who Amazon has? Amazon's got those guys. Amazon's got the will. It's got the cash. It's got the payment system. Now, here's the killer for Jeff Bezos. The killer for Jeff Bezos is what I said earlier, which is that the Chinese online payment systems are the best in the world, okay? They, they, you gotta trust me, do your research, but I'm telling you right now, there's nothing that compares to the Chinese online payment systems. And they're gonna blow your mind. You're gonna be embarrassed to see how much better they are than American payment systems, literally. And I'm not talking just ease. I'm talking about security. I'm talking about consumer satisfaction. I'm talking about just, just, just general breeziness of use. And also, also much better security. I'm not going to get into that. The reasons why I have five good reasons I could do maybe in a future video why the payment systems are actually not only better but more secure than American payment systems. And I don't mean by a little bit. I mean by a lot. So don't, don't think I'm saying that they're just so easy to use and they're dangerous. Actually, the security on a Chinese app is much, much better than your Visa card, much better. You can rest assured with a Chinese app that you're not gonna get ripped off, period. And there's five good reasons. I'll go into that in a future video. But just on, for now, take this, on, take, take this with a grain of salt, do your own research. But I'm telling you right now, lay this on you. I lived in China, you know, I'll do a video later. But okay, so, Alibaba has one of the greatest payment systems in the world. 
something the Americans have never seen before, something that is so addictive and so easy to use and so lovely to use that everybody, despite their libertarian bend, like I have, you know, my Bitcoin loving self, who you'd never, I would never even myself imagine I'd say this, but once you use these online payment systems, you realize they're so good. They make your life so easy. I, it's Again, it's like one of these things you can't explain unless you try it, okay? So Alibaba has this, okay? I don't want to exaggerate, but I, I do want to kind of let you know as a non-user, you don't really know how easy life can be, really, to be a consumer. And and, and it's, just, oh, it's just awesome. So Alibaba's got that. So Costco merges with Alibaba. Whether Alibaba buys Costco or they merge, they merge hardcore at the at the DNA level. So that probably means Amazon has to buy Costco, purchase Costco, and start to utilize those stores as their out their retail outlets. Now everybody knows the Costco retail outlets are a hundred million times better than Whole Foods. Whole Foods was a I mean I love Whole Foods. I I, I shop at Whole Foods all the time when I'm back. I love Whole Foods actually, but and I love the I love what Amazon did lowered the price yeah, a lot of, of a lot of goods and made it more high volume and it's great. But look at the parking lots; they're in the middle of these malls with like you're always fighting for a parking space at a, at a Whole Foods. You go to a Costco, man. There's like million parking spaces. It's a piece of cake, right? And they got the back door to deliver. They got gasoline. They got everything's there. So imagine you go to Costco, okay, or or you go to Amazon or Alibaba. You order. You get your Costco goods in 30 minutes at your door, okay? Everything that you order is now at your door. You're not driving there. You're not driving in traffic. Your drugs, your food, your steaks, your stuff comes at your door, refrigerated, ready to go 30 minutes after you click it on your iPhone. Imagine that. Imagine what that means to you. This is the power of the combination of of Costco and Alibaba. And then imagine, then imagine the Costco's become much more fun to go to because when you go there, you can eat whatever you want. You want to have like high-end crab and some champagne or, you know, high-end wine. You can buy a $10,000 bottle of wine at Costco. And then you can sit there and you can drink it and have your crab right out front. I'm not saying you want to do that, but some guys do. Trust me. I got a lot of rich friends and they're like, hey, that'd be awesome. You know, it's like, yeah, have some good wine and some nice crab, you know. And, and then also like the average person is like, hey, I could have my burrito out front with the, the flavors I want, you know, and just order it, you know. And, and I, I think that what you're going to see is you're going to see Costco will have a lot more products. It's going to be because you're going to have Alibaba behind them delivering with these huge centralized warehouses. It will take time. Okay, this is the one difficult part is it will take time for Alibaba to reproduce they already have in China, don't get me wrong, the Chinese in China, the Alibaba warehouses are very similar to the Amazon warehouses. They're completely automated. They're incredibly badass. And they've already done this with the Hema, which you can see in the video below. You can see how they've already automated the delivery system where the, the app, you order it and it goes into this little hook and it goes up, goes out to the delivery guy who brings it on his bike, his motorcycle to your door, right? So they've already done that. They've already done the thing. They've, they've gone, they have the model that will make Costco better. It will also make Costco able to compete with Amazon and beat Amazon in many ways. You'll have better food, okay? You'll have better food made to order and you'll have, which is more important or as important, you're gonna have the Alipay system, which will make it very, very easy for you to get more information on products, more easier to price compare, easier to purchase, easier to see what you know this wine should go with. You know, when you go to Costco, you buy a bottle of wine, you just look at it, right? When you go to Huma, you click on it, and it and you can click on things that match it, and then you'll just see like it's this type of fish and that type of fish and this type of fish, and then you go to that that section and you order the fish that match that wine. It, it all comes out in the app. So it makes it much easier to cook with Am with Alibaba and Chuma because in Costco, you actually have to know something about cooking, right? You got to go pick out the wine. You got to go over to the fish section. Which fish goes with this wine? Uh, how am I going to, let's see, which which wine, which fish? Alibaba, man, no problem, man. Chuma, you just click it, beam, beep, beep, beep. 
brings you the right one and the information is all there and it also knows what you're buying so if you're making something you know if you're you don't know, like are you making you know this souffle or something you might you also might need you know this other ingredient and it will also recommend that then you click on that boom add it to your thing and you get home and they either make it at the door you eat it at the door or you can have them deliver it 30 minutes later you can drive home uh, they can deliver it 30 minutes later at your door, or you can carry it home if you want to, right? That, that'll be the type of options. Costco will be relevant again. Costco will be a completely internet company. Costco will have the best payment gateway in the world, the best payment system in the world, the most fluid, easy to use. Chinese will shop there like mad. Trust me on this. Visiting Chinese will all go to Costco, all go to Alibaba. Sales will be very good. There'll be all kinds of new customers coming in. Uh, into Costco, into the Costco ecosystem, which is now Costco is completely an online company. And it's a huge middle finger to Jeff Bezos. Uh, but again, I, 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 I like Jeff too. So, you know, I think that I think it's going to be interesting. It's, it's all business, right? It's going to be interesting to see how Jeff responds if Costco goes with this radical route and partners with Amazon. I'm uh, sorry, uh, Alibaba. I would love to see this happen. I think that Costco is in a dangerous situation with the longer they ignore this. And I want to say, let's see what happens. It's going to be very, very interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how things go down. So uh, yeah, Paul from paulsailor.com. If you like this video, subscribe. I have a lot of different kinds of videos. Everything is things that I'm interested in. I'm not selling anything. If you like this, if you think it's interesting, this is for people that like to think and it's a, it's a thinking channel, right? So I love good discussion. So please add anything that you think is like valuable uh, down below in the comments, share and subscribe. And let's get a good discussion going about this because this is gonna affect you, it's gonna affect me. And the data, I got one last thing, the data that will come from the merging of Amazon and Alibaba is gonna be phenomenal, which will lead to artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is the next coming wave and a very, very powerful. This big data is more important than anything else. It's considered the electricity of the future artificial intelligence market. And this will bring, this will like catapult, extrapolate the data and, and, and the merger will create uh, a, very, a very, very powerful machine. Uh, and of course it has to be smart. You know, there is, there, there's a lot of things to think about. Uh, with a merger this big, especially when you're talking cross-border merger, and then you're talking a Chinese company, an American company, I realize it's a radical idea, but I, I, I love Costco. I want to see Costco to succeed. I want to see them. I want to see them beat Jeff Bezos right now, right? I don't want to see Jeff Bezos destroy Costco, and I think this could be one possible solution, very counterintuitive and very radical. So Paul Saylor, PaulSailor.com, signing off. Thanks for listening.